In this chapter, we will be introducing the concepts of permutations and combinations. In this lesson, we will be looking specifically at combinations. Okay, so we're going to define what a combination is. And um, we're going to, in a few minutes here, think about it in terms of how it's different than a permutation. How they're the same and how they're different here. A combination, and actually I'm going to change the little definition that's here. A combination, a combination is a selection, okay, of a, a subset of elements, okay, or a set of elements. Um, and then I'm going to just stop it right there. The order in which they're selected is not important, okay? It's not an arrangement. Okay? It's, it's, I'm not putting things in different orders here. That's not what a combination is. A combination is just getting objects. The number of different ways you could just amass or collect a group of objects from a given group here. Now, here's the formula for it. The number of different combinations, or sorry, the number of combinations of... Um, of R items taken from a group of N is maybe the best way to think about that. And there's a, a, a couple different ways that we can denote this. Okay, this is a, a common way of doing it, but um, for our purposes, we typically use this right here. This is the notation that you'll see on, on most Texas Instrument calculators, and so that's the one we're going to use typically. And notice what it looks like here. Notice that it's N factorial over N minus R factorial, and we've seen that before. That's, that's a permutation. But then we divide by the number of ways of permuting the, the R choices that we're making. So think about it like this. That N factorial over N minus R factorial, that's NPR over R factorial. That's what a combination is. Okay? And we're going to use this to determine the number of ways of creating committees or people can shake hands. And there's lots of other applications for combinations. Actually, there's, there's tons of them. Uh, but to illustrate what's going on here, um, I'm not going to exactly do this, this example that's given to us right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of an adaptation of this. Now I'm just going to get you to come over here with me and we'll, we'll zoom in a little bit. We're going to consider the words, the letters in the word cat, just like they've done over here, but we're going to do this a little, different, a little differently here. I'm going to take a look at the number of ways you can permute from three items, we can permute two of them. Okay, and the answer to this is six. Now those six permutations are going to be CA. AC, uh, CT, TC, AT, TA. These are the six different permutations of two letters from the word, from the letters in the word cat. Okay, now notice that permutations treat CA and AC exactly the same. There are two different ways you can permute those two letters. Okay, permutations can treat CT and TC as different. And there are two different ways you can permute those letters. A, T, T, A are treated as different. But what if I'm not interested in the order that they, that they come in? Okay, what if it's, for example, um, I'm looking at, um, maybe I'm at the ice cream store. There are, there are three kinds of ice cream that I want and, and I'm allowed to grab two of them. How many different ways can I do this? Well, I don't really care what order you put them into my plate or my bowl. I just care that I get them. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take that six permutations and because each one of these little sets here can be permuted in two different ways, each of them, but I don't care about those, what I'm going to do here is I will take though that three pick two or three permute two and I will divide by two factorial the number of ways I can, I can do that and that'll be three. There are three different ways I can choose two items from a group of three, okay? And it's like either A and C, C and T, or A and T. Those are my three different ways that I could choose two items. So this right here, this is what this means when we say, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to say N. I meant to say three, choose two. Okay, so you can see right now that a permutation does a lot of the work that a combination does, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna divide out the number of ways you can permute that little group of items that we, that we chose from the larger group, okay? So it's really important that you remember here the distinction between these two. In a permutation, if you change the order of the items, like here, if you change the order, okay, we treat those as different results. But in a combination, a combination would look at those two and say they're the same thing. It doesn't matter what order they come in as long as you've got those items uh, because this has an A and a T, this has an A and T, those are exactly the same here. That's what a combination is. All right, let's take a look at some examples uh, using combinations. Jane calculated 10 choose 2 to be 45 arrangements. 
She then calculated 10 choose 8 to be 45 arrangements. Use factorial notation to prove this, that 10 choose 2 is equal to 10 choose 8. All right, now before I, I go through and I do this uh, using factorial notation, I want to discuss conceptually what's going on here and why these two are the same. Uh, 10 choose 2, think about what that means here. Again, order is not important, but let's, let's think of it this way. Let's say I walk into a room and there's, there's 10 students there and I need help with some, pro I'm going to move some boxes or whatever, and I need just two people to come and help me here. Ten, uh, the number of ways I can s grab two students and have them come with me would be to 10 choose 2. Now, the exact opposite of that, but at the same time, very related ideas. What if I walked in there and I said, okay, I need two people to come with me. You eight stay here. Okay, so instead of choosing the two people, in a sense, what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose eight people to stay behind, but the results are exactly the same. Okay, it's, it's the same situation, it's just two different ways of looking at it. Either I'm grabbing two from a group of ten, or I'm leaving eight from that group of ten. Either way, the result is the same. So those are going to be the same value here. So now let's take a look at how that works. So we'll start with 10 choose 2. And what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to run along here. This isn't typically the way we'd use equal signs here, but just because of the space that I'm given, this is, makes the most sense. So by our definition above, that is 10 factorial. Now, remember how the combination notation works. It's going to be the left side factorial over the left side minus the right side factorial, right side factorial. Okay. And that's that's how we interpret that 10 choose 2, put it in factorial notation. Now it makes sense for us to evaluate 10 choose 2, so that's going to be 10 factorial over 8 factorial 2 factorial. Now at this point it might not be abundantly clear how that goes to 10 choose 8, but the trick here is just realizing uh, that there's some things that you can do with math uh, they're totally okay. They might not be obvious, but they're totally acceptable. Like, for example, I'm going to change the order of 2 factorial and 8 factorial. That's not a huge step, okay? But it's multiplied together. Order doesn't matter for multiplication. I can do that. And then what I'm going to do, and this is probably the least obvious little step here, but again, once you see me do it, you'll recognize, well, okay, that's, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm going to write uh, the 2 here. Okay, I'm going to make this 10 minus 8 factorial, 8 factorial. Now, 10 minus 8 is just 2. I haven't, I haven't done anything. Okay, it's still the exact same thing. I've just written that 2 in a slightly different notation here. Now, take a look at this. I've got the 10 here, 10 minus 8 factorial, 8 factorial. That is the same as 10 choose or 10 combination 8. And so we've been able to go right here from 10 choose 2 is equal to this, which is equal to this, is equal to this, is equal to this, is equal to this, and implies that these two combinations, let's zoom out a little bit, whoops, zoom out a little bit, these two combinations must therefore be equal to each other. How many subcommittees of four students can be formed from a student council consisting of seven students? All right, now here's a perfect example of a question that requires combinations. How many subcommittees of four students can be formed from a, a student council consisting of seven students? Like, okay, we, we've just said this here. So the, the issue here is I've got seven students and I need to choose four of them. Now, how do I know this is a combination? Well, because think about it. If you're just putting somebody on committee, does order matter? I mean, if we're just like, for example, drawing names from a hat to see who's going to participate on this, on this committee here, does it matter if you're the first person chose or the last person chose? No, it doesn't make any difference whatsoever. You're still on the committee. Now, let's take a look at how you'd calculate that in your calculator. Okay, so first of all, I'll press 7. And then I'm going to press the math button here. So get me to this menu right here, and I'll move over to the PRB menu. And right there, number 3, there's my NCR. So I'll choose that. And it immediately drops the 7 down there, and it's waiting for me to put the number... Uh, down here, it's 4 in this case, and if I press enter, there's the answer, 35. So there are 35 different unique ways that I could select a group of 4 people from a group of 7. In how many ways can a set of 6 cards be dealt from just the hearts in a standard deck of cards? Alright, well to answer this question right here, you actually got to know something about the, the deck of cards. Um, and I know we've talked about this in, in earlier lessons here, but again, just to reiterate, there are 52 cards in a deck. 
broken into four suits. And because of that, there's going to be 13 cards per suit here. So we know there's going to be 13 hearts. So the question is, how many ways can you select six cards from that set of 13? Now, although it is true that there are games out there that exist where the order that you're dealt the cards is actually significant, is important, for the vast majority of them, no, it's not. And the implication here is that no, order doesn't matter. Um, and that, like I said, that's true for, for most games here. So 13, choose six. And again, on our calculator, 13, just again to show you again here, we press the math button to get into this menu right here. And we're looking for the PRB menu. And down there, combination is option three. So 13, choose six, 17, 16. So there's 1,716 different ways that you can deal uh, six cards from just the hearts. A restaurant serves 10 flavors of ice cream. Tim wants a sundae with three scoops of ice cream. How many different combinations of ice cream can she choose if each scoop is to be a different color? All right, well now here's an example and then I had sort of referred to this before. We've got uh, 10 flavors of ice cream and Tim wants a sundae with three scoops. So we're throwing three scoops in there, but three different flavors here. It doesn't matter, okay, you got your bowl here looking from the top, you're gonna have a scoop there, scoop there, scoop there. It doesn't matter what order you throw them in, as long as they're there. That's, that's all you care about, as long as they're there. So that's 10 options there, and we're going to choose three of them. Now, you know now how to go to your calculator and do this, and it's just a quick calculation, and when you do that, you'll get there's 120. So 120 different, different combinations of flavors he can mix together in his bowl. How many handshakes will occur between eight people in a room? Here's a question that comes up all the time. It's, uh, I don't know why it is, it's just a, maybe it's just an easy question for, for teachers to come up with, or I don't know, maybe there's some significance to it, I don't know, but people are always interested in the number of handshakes that occur. So if you've got eight people in the room, well, how many people do you need to form a handshake? And the answer is you just need two people. Is order an issue? Well, no. No, it doesn't matter. We're just pairing up people. They're, in fact, order doesn't even make sense in that, in that context. So the number of handshakes that will occur, the number of ways you can group or pair off people uh, that, that are in a group of eight there is eight choose two. And you go to your calculator and you'll find out that there's 28 uh, different handshakes that would occur in a group of eight if everybody shakes hands with everybody else. How many possible selections of six numbers can be made from the numbers 1 to 49, as in the Lotto 649? Okay, now this is an interesting question. Uh, you've got, in the Lotto 649, you've got 49 numbers, okay, and they're just on a, on a ticket here. And what you do is you just shade in uh, your choice of, of six of those, okay? So the question is, how many different tickets are available uh, if you choose six numbers from uh, 49 options? And so that is going to be 49 choose six. Order's not important. In fact, you don't, you don't have the option of mixing the orders there. You're just quite literally just choosing the numbers that they give you. And when you, you do this, you get 13,983,816 different groups of six that you can get from 49 numbers. Now, that's a, that's a huge number here. Okay, and That's really interesting. Now, I want you to think about this because uh, this raises some interesting questions here, particularly when the when the lotto, when the prize goes over, let's say, $14 million, and, and it does, it periodically does go quite a bit above that. And uh, It's just an interesting question. You should go ask your teacher about, about the way that works. Five students are being selected for a committee from eight females and nine males. How many committees are possible if the committee must have A, any five people, B, exactly three females and two males, C, Jill and exactly one male, and D, one female or two females. Okay, so first of all, to answer this question, we need to figure out how many people we've got total. Okay, we've got eight females, nine males, and so that's 17 people total. Now, so let's take a look at the first question here. How many ways can we put together this committee if we've only got, uh, sorry, if the committee is supposed to have any, any five of these people? Well, that's just going to be 17 choose five. I'll go to my calculator and you'll see really quick that that's 6,188 different five people committees you can create here. Now, what if the committee has to have exactly three females and two males? Well, okay, now we've seen the word and before, and that should remind you that communicates about multiplication. So we're going to multiply two things together here. Now, to get exactly three females, I've got eight to choose from, 
and I will choose three. That right there is, is going to give me the exactly three females, okay? Now, I'm gonna multiply that though by our choice of males. Now, and the reason we gotta do that is because to have this five person committee, I need my the girls and the boys, okay? Girls and boys, and so that's a multiplication here. And there are nine boys and we're gonna choose, well, to finish that off, I have to choose two. Now I'll just go to my calculator and enter that all in. So eight choose three times nine choose two. And it turns out there are 2,016 different committees that can be formed with exactly three females and two males, okay? Now, just a couple of things about this. This is gonna be typical of a lot of the questions that you'll get in this chapter. Now, it's not, uh, it's not a, uh, an absolute rule here, but notice that the when I multiply these combinations together, Notice that the first numbers here, the left-hand side of each combination, when you add those numbers up, that equals the total size of the group that I'm choosing from. Okay, there are 17 people I'm choosing from. And when I take the two numbers that are on the right-hand side, that's five. That, when you add those together, represents the size of the group you're choosing. Okay, now that should happen in most of these cases, particularly with these committees that we're working on. That should happen. Now, that's not, like again, that's not an absolute rule for combinations. So there will be exceptions to that. Uh, obviously, there's always gonna be something where the, the scenario doesn't quite support that. But this is a really good rule of thumb when working with these committee questions. It'll help you avoid some, some fairly predictable mistakes. Let's take a look at this next one. It says, Jill and exactly one male. Okay, Jill. A common mistake to be made here when you're trying to choose Jill is to look at that and say, okay, well, there's eight females and I'm just gonna choose the one that's Jill. But that's not what this means. Eight choose one is the number of ways you can reach into a group of eight and select an individual. But you see, that doesn't guarantee that it's Jill. So in order to guarantee that you're choosing Jill in this scenario, what we do is we'll do one choose one. There's one Jill, we'll choose her. And exactly one male, well, there's nine males to choose from. I'm not, whoops, <laughs> sorry, I threw in M for male there. And I certainly didn't want to do that. Better erase that. It's going to be nine choose one. Okay. And I'm still not done. I still haven't finished the committee here. I've got one person, I've got two people chosen. Now, I've got one girl chosen already from that group. So okay, Jill has now been taken out of that. I'm gonna look at the rest of the girls and there are seven remaining girls. And in order to finish this committee, I need to choose three of them to get my, my five here. So one choose one times nine choose one, okay, times seven choose three. And I'm just gonna to go to my calculator here, figure that out. And it looks like we're getting 315 different committees here. Now, notice if you take a look at the first numbers in every case here, one and nine and seven, there's my 17. And then look at the, the second number here, one and one and three, there's the sum of five, okay? The size of the committee. Now let's take a quick look here. The committee has to have one female or two females. Okay, or, okay, as we've seen before, typically implies the, the operation addition. And that actually makes sense in this case here. It is not possible to have a committee that has just one female and at the same time two females, okay? Uh, these, are, these are what we might call mutually exclusive events here. You've either got one female or you've got two females. You, you don't have a mixture of that. Now, to get one female, that would be eight choose one. Now, we're not told specifically uh, which female this is, and apparently it doesn't matter as long as you have a female in there. And then we're gonna multiply that by nine choose four, okay, because we need to choose, we need to finish the committee. There needs to be five people total here. And if there's one female, there must be nine, sorry, four men. Or, okay, or what we're gonna do here is we're going to choose two females, okay, so that'll be eight choose two. And then what we'll do is we'll multiply that by the number of males that we have to choose here. In this case, that would have to be three, so we'll nine choose three. Just do this on my calculator. And all together, I'm getting that this rep uh, that to satisfy these conditions here would give us 3,360 different committees that have either exactly one female or exactly two females. How many five card hands can be dealt from a standard deck of 52 cards if 
A. There are no further restrictions. B. They must contain only hearts. C. They must have three red cards and two black cards. D. They must have ten, uh, three tens and two fours. And E. They must have four jacks. Okay, so we've talked about cards before here. Um, so now we've got 52 cards. We're dealing with the whole deck here. We just want five of them. Again, order's not that important here. So 52, choose five is what we'll do here. And this turns out to be, when you go to your calculator, you'll see this 2,598,960 different five card hands that you can deal to someone uh, from a deck of 52 cards, which is really quite a large number when you think about it here. How about they must contain only hearts? Well, now we've talked about this before. Hearts uh, represent um, just one suit, okay, out of the deck of cards. And because there's four suits there, that means each suit has to contain 13 cards. So if you're only going to have cards, uh, sorry, hearts here, there are 13 you're going to choose from. Again, order doesn't matter. And that'll be 13 choose five. So 1,287 different uh, five card hands that are just hearts. Okay, how many are going to have three red cards and two black cards? Well, okay, you got to know that when we talk about the suits here, uh, what we're going to have here is two of the suits are going to be red cards, two of the suits are going to be um, black cards, okay? So, and if each suit has 13 cards in it, that means there are going to be 26 red cards, and so we're going to choose three of them. But that doesn't finish our, our hand here, and of the 26 remaining black cards, okay, I'm just going to enter this in my calculator as I go here, 26, I need to choose two of those cards uh, to finish this hand here. So 26 choose three of the red cards and 26 choose two for the black cards there. And what I get is 845,000 different five card hands that look like that. Okay, what if it's made up of three tens and two fours? Okay, well, three tens and two fours. Now, how many tens are there? Well, each suit, okay, each suit has got, um, like if your hearts, clubs, diamonds, whatever, each suit's got 13 cards. They're numbered basically one through 10, and then you've got the jack, queen, and the king, the, what we call the face cards. So there are, in that deck of 52 cards, four tens. I just want three of them. So that's going to be four, choose three, and two of the fours. Now, just like the tens, there would be four fours in that in that uh, deck of cards, one four for each suit. And so this will be four choose two. So four choose three times four choose two. And when I do that, I only get 24 different ways that I can deal that, that hand there. Now that's interesting when you think about the total number being just under, a little under 2.6 million different hands, and there's only 24 that look like that. That's, that's, a, that's a good hand, the probability is quite low. Now let's take a look one. They have four jacks. Okay, well, how many ways can you grab the four jacks? Now, if, if we're looking at just the jacks, there are four of them, and if we want four of them, that's got to be four choose four. In other words, uh, you're going to choose all of them. Now, it turns out when you go to four choose four, that's only going to be one. There's only one way you can look at a group of four objects and take all of them. But this is supposed to be a five card hand, so I've got four cards here. I still need another card. Now, if you take the jacks away, there are still 48 cards left over, and all I gotta do is choose one of them. See, and it turns out the number of ways you can do that is 48. There's only one way to choose all four jacks. This is really the issue here. How many different ways can you choose the remaining card? And the only way to do that is, is to grab like basically one card at a time, and with 48 cards, there are 48 different ways you can do that. A. How many lines can be drawn between five points on a circle? B. How many quadrilaterals can be drawn using the same five points? And C. How many diagonals can be formed from the vertices of a hexagon? Okay, let's, let's draw this out so we can see what they're talking about here. Let's say you've got a circle, and you just put five points on it. So one, two, three, four, five. So the question is, how many lines can you draw between these five points? Well, to draw a line, all I need is two points. So the question is, how many ways can you do that? Okay, well, 
I've got five points here. I only need uh, two points for a line. That's going to be five choose two. And the answer is five choose two. If you go to your calculator, there are ten different ways you can do that. And there's my ten lines. One, two, three, four, five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay? Now, how many quadrilaterals can be drawn using those same five points? Well, okay, let's just draw one here. Here's my five points again. One quadrilateral would look like this. Okay, I'm just connecting uh, four of the five points here. I only need four points for a quadrilateral. So the number of quadrilaterals would be five choose four. And when you go to your calculator and enter that in, you'll get five choose four is actually five. There are only five ways of doing that. That actually makes a lot of sense here because every time you draw a quadrilateral with five points, you're going to miss one. So how many unique quadrilaterals can you draw? Well, how many times can you miss just one point here? And the answer is, is five. I miss this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. Five, it's five different quadrilaterals. Now, this next one here, and this is, a, this is a classic one here, how many diagonals can be formed from the vertices of a hexagon? Okay, well, a hexagon has six points. Uh, one of the problems when you first start this problem is a little bit of a misunderstanding as to what a diagonal is. Let's just go over here and talk about this. That line right there is not a diagonal. We'll often use the word diagonal to refer to a line that looks like that, but that is not a diagonal. This is called oblique. That's actually the word that we want to use here. Now, okay, then what's a diagonal? Well, here, draw that line in here. As soon as I do this and draw a polygon around it, now it becomes a diagonal, okay? A diagonal is a line, okay, interior to a polygon that connects two points in the polygon. Now, not, not this line right here. That's a side. That's a side of the polygon. The diagonal has to be interior to that polygon, okay, cutting through the middle of it, connecting two points. That's a diagonal. Now, take a look at this problem here. I've got six points here. Well, how many ways can I connect them? Okay, well, the answer is six choose two. Okay, there are six choose two ways I can connect these things. So I can draw in all of these lines here. Uh, what do I got here? That's going to be like that, connected. Uh, this is going to connect to there. Now, here's the number of points that I get, or the number of lines that I get. Now, notice that not all of those, those line segments there would be considered the diagonals of that hexagon. In fact, how many, how many aren't? Well, that's a side, that's a side, that's a side. I've got six sides. So to get the number of diagonals would be six choose two. That's all of the different possible line segments here. And then I'm going to subtract from that the six that I would count as sides, not the diagonals. And when you plug that in your calculator, you will get nine. Okay, so there are nine lines that I'm drawing in here that would count as the diagonals of that hexagon. How many five card hands have three kings or four kings? Okay, so for this one here, notice that we've got, again, five cards in uh, the hand that we're building. And we're assuming from the regular standard deck, 52 cards. And we want how many have three kings or, or implies addition, four kings. So let's think about this. We've got... Uh, four suits, there's going to be one king per suit, so we could have, of those four, we could choose three for our hand, and then that leaves us with 48 different cards that, that aren't kings, and so what I'd be looking for here is I'm going to choose two of those, so there's my 52 cards, and then there's my five cards, or of the four kings, I choose all four of them, and then from the 48 remaining cards, I choose one, and again, there's my 52 cards, and then there's my five cards when you add those two together. And then when you go to your calculator to evaluate this, you simply get 4,560 different hands that have either three kings or four kings. The Athletic Council decides to form a subcommittee of seven council members to look at how funds raised should be spent on sports activities at the school. There are a total of 15 Athletic Council members, nine males and six females. The subcommittee must consist of exactly three females. And how many ways can A, the subcommittee, be chosen, and B, can the subcommittee be chosen if Bruce, the football coach, must be included? Okay, so let's start with the thing in this question that's, that's absolutely necessary here. 
uh, the subcommittee that we're coming up with has to have exactly three females. So, okay, there are six females to choose from, so that's going to be six choose three. Now, in this first question here, it says the, the, the number of subcommittees, how many ways can we do it without any other kind of restriction there? Well, I've got my three females. Now what I need to have a, a group of, of um, seven here is from the nine remaining males, I need to choose four. So there I see the first two numbers add up to the total size of the group I'm choosing from, and there's my 15. And then the three and the four add up to the size of the group I'm choosing, seven. And when you evaluate that in your calculator, you'll get 2,520. Now look at this next one here. What if we've got to have Bruce on the committee? Okay, well, first of all, we still need to have three women. There needs to be exactly three women. Now we've got to have Bruce. Now don't think of this, I'm going to just do this incorrectly here and then I'll erase it in just a second. Don't think of this as nine shoes one to get Bruce. That's actually not true. Nine choose one is, is far more general than that. This is of the nine guys, I choose one. How many ways can I do that? Well, that's actually not what I'm trying to get at with this question. If we have to choose Bruce, there's only one Bruce, we have to choose him, okay? Now, I still need to finish this committee. I still need uh, three more guys here. There are eight guys left over to choose from and I need three. So now take a look at this. When you add the first numbers together, the six, the one, and the eight, I'm still getting my 15 total. And if I add the secondary numbers here, three, one, and three, there's the seven, the size of the group that I'm choosing. And when you enter this into your calculator, you get 1,120 different committees that have Bruce on it. A, how many games need to be scheduled between 10 teams in a league if each team plays each other team once? And B, how many games if the 10 teams play each other twice? Okay, so we're assuming that when you, when these uh, teams get scheduled, uh, that you really only need two teams to play a game. And that, again, order doesn't matter. I mean, A versus B is the same as B versus A. It doesn't really make any difference here. So the number of ways you can do that will be 10 teams, and we're just going to choose two. Okay, and when we evaluate that in the calculator, you're going to get 45. Now, how many ways can we do this if the 10 teams here play each other twice? Now, this is an interesting problem because it, it creates a little bit of confusion with this, but it's actually a really straightforward problem. Um, all we're going to do here is take this. This number represents how many times they play each other once. Okay, how many ways we can get that to happen? Just And just think about it like this. It, it would be like this. Okay, 45 different ways we can pair up those teams. And then just think about it. If the teams play each other uh, twice here, okay, um, just the if they, okay, to pair them up, there's 45 different ways they can pair it up. Now, let's just assume that every time like A plays B, they play each other twice. So A, B, A, B. So how many games get played then? Well, 90 games would get played if they play each other twice. How many ways can 15 volunteers help at a school carnival if four are needed for the ticket booth, three are needed at the concession stand, and four, I'm sorry, and eight are needed for the games area? All the volunteers are qualified to work at any of the stations. Okay, this problem here is going to end up being a bit of an exception to the rule that we've set up with how combinations work. Okay, so we've got 15 people here and we're going to need four for the, what does it say here, four are needed for the ticket booth, three for the concession stand, and, and eight for the games area. Now, so the way we're going to do this here is we're going to start with those 15. Now, we're going to assume that order uh, doesn't matter when we, when we make these choices here. Okay, um, it's not like we're, we're lining them up at the ticket booth. We just need help at the ticket booth here. So that's all we're going to do. And once we've chosen those four, that gives us 11 left over, and we can choose from that. We'll choose three to go to the concession. And then after this, we'll have eight left over, and we'll choose all eight. Okay, now the number of different ways that this can happen here is going to be, uh, when you go to your calculator, 225,225. Okay, uh, now I'm just going to double check that on the calculator there just to make sure that I've done that correctly. Yeah. Now, this sort of violates that rule here, and I'll explain why it works though in just a second. If you add these beginning numbers together, 15 and 11, there's 26, and 8 is 34, it looks like there's 34 people here. Okay, and there's not. Okay, there's only 15, but the reason why this works is because the the groups that we're creating here actually form what we call a partition 
of this group of people here. Everybody gets chosen. Everybody here gets chosen. Now, if we go up to like a previous question when we were talking about subcommittees, okay, uh, in a case like this, I can't, for example, choose, um, let's, let's say that the question was at least three women. I can't just choose three women, put the rest of the women back in the group and then choose from there. Because if you're not choosing everybody, then the combinations that you create here end up uh, double counting certain committees. Okay, the number gets to be way too large here. Here though, everybody gets chosen every single time. I can tell that because at the end here I get eight choose eight. Now by the way, this could have been done differently as well. I could have started 15, maybe chosen the three first. Okay, that would have given me uh, 12 left over. Let's say I chose the eight from there and then I would have had four left over and I would have had to choose all four of them. And that would again be two, uh, 225,225. Okay, I can do this in however many different ways I, I want to set those numbers up. But as long as everybody gets chosen, I can violate that, that rule that we've set up before. But you just got to remember that that's the way that works. Unless everybody's getting chosen, um, you need to stick to that rule that those first numbers, when they add them all up, they have to add up to the total size of the group. A committee of five is to be formed from seven females and six males. Find the number of committees possible if they must have A, exactly three females, B, at least four females, or C, at most two males. Okay, so now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kind of take some of the time here to explain um, an error that gets made in one of these questions here. And it's going to take us a little bit more time than, than average here, but I want to make sure that you don't, you don't think you're coming up with a great idea that turns out to be wrong here. And I'll show you in a second here. So to start off with, we're going to create this committee of five. We're going to have exactly three females. We've got seven females to choose from. Okay, we've got six males. We're just going to have to choose two. So now I'm just going to quickly go to my calculator. Seven choose three multiplied by six choose two. And we get that there are 525 different committees where we can, we can do that. Now let's uh, take a quick look over here. At least four females. Now let's just think about that. At least four females means there could be four females or there could be five females. Now that means seven choose four. And if I do that, I'd still have to choose one male to finish that off or, and or means addition, all of them are females and none of them are males. Now when I go to my calculator to evaluate that, I'll get seven choose four multiplied by six choose one. And then I'll add to that seven choose five multiplied by six, and I'm, I know I'm doing this anyway, but six choose zero, I don't really need to because six choose zero is gonna be one. And I'll get that there are 231 different committees that have at least four females. Now, before I move on and when we finish up this lesson here, I wanna have a little chat with you guys about this problem right here. Uh, several years ago, uh, I had a class and I had a student in that class. He had a, when he was dealing with a problem like this, he had a quote unquote great idea as to how to handle this. He shared his idea with his friends and on the exam, they all got this one wrong. But his idea was so, had s such logic to it that uh, there was even a teacher, another teacher that I was working with that came to me and asked why this is incorrect. And actually we talked about this and I wanna show you what his error was so that you don't, you don't look at this and think, oh, I've got a shortcut here. And this is what he did. Now bear in mind, that is how I need you to answer this problem. This was the error and I'll put this right here. This is the error. What he did is he said, let's, let's choose at least four females. So they went seven, choose four. And then what he said was this, okay, that leaves me three females here. They're gonna take that group of females and combine them with the group of males. Now that's, that's then gonna be nine people and we'll just choose one. Now out of that nine, you may choose another female, but you might choose a male. So right there, you know, you think, well, there it is. Okay, seven choose four, nine choose one. But let's evaluate that. Seven choose four times nine choose one and we get 315. Okay, those are not the same and this is bigger. So something's going on here. Let me explain to you what's going on. 
let's say that here are the females. I'll just I'm gonna throw um, I'm gonna throw uh, four. Actually, this is a, a little more awkward. Well, no, I'll do it this way. I'm going to throw out four females here. So let's say the females are A, B, C, D. Okay, and let's say the male over here, or, yeah, let's say that the male here is a... Uh... Oh, crap.